Okay, so here's an example. So the initial endowments, I am not giving any numerical values because, uh, you know, the solution will work for any, well, the method will work for any utility functions, any endowments, but uh, in order to get a specific result, we need to have a specific utility functions, but we don't really need a specific endowment. So the initial endowments are as given such, and the utilities are simple, the Cobb Douglas X times Y. So the question is, what is the Walrasian, Walrasian uh, uh, price ratio, PX, PY? All right, there's gonna be infinitely many uh, price ratios. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Uh, there's gonna be infinitely many prices in the Walrasian equilibrium, but the price ratio is gonna be unique. And so we need to find that. And obviously it's gonna be a function of the initial endowments. All right. So if you remember the Walrasian equilibrium, uh, we have to have two things. One, agents maximize utility subject to budget constraint, and then market clears, all right? Market clears. So the first part, utility maximization, utility maximization. So agent A first. Uh, well, agent A or B doesn't really matter, but what we have is, um, from the utility maximization, remember, the marginal rate of substitution equal to price ratio, minus price ratio, Px over Py. This has to hold for both agent A and for agent B, minus Px over Py. All right, so what is the marginal rate of substitution for agent A and B? Well, it's simple. Uh, YA divided by XA, and this is YB divided by XB. Oh, the minuses, I'm sorry, I, I forgot. So this is margin rate of substitution, and this is the price ratio, all right? So the margin rate of substitution for agent B. So I just skipped the derivative part. We already solved this uh, in the previous videos. So basically, this is all I have. I, I mean, what, what do I mean all I have? It's like, uh, X A P X has to be equal to Y A P Y and X B P X has to be equal to Y B P Y. All right. So I'm going to use those on the budget curve, the budget constraints, the budget. I mean, these are not optimal demands. The optimal demands depend only on the exogenous parameters, which is P X and P Y. If your x depends on y or y depends on x, it means you have not yet calculated, found the optimal demand, all right? So, so these are not optimal demands. It's just a relationship. So if you choose optimally, x and y should satisfy this relationship. Well, use the budget constraint to find the optimal demands. So for agent A, what is the budget constraint? Uh, XA times PX, uh, YA times PY equals to um, WAX PX plus WAY PY. I hope I don't make mistakes because there's going to be a lot of notation. So what I know is that XA PX equal to YAPY. So whenever I see YAPY, just write XAPX. So I'm going to have two of those, which is equal to this. All right. And so leave XA alone. So I'm going to get the following. Uh, WAX time. Oops. Oh. Uh, this is bad notation. So WAX PX plus WAY PY divided by 2 PX. This is how many good X agent A is going to demand. Uh, should I find agent, uh, uh, agent A's good Y consumption? Uh, in order to find the Walrasian price ratio, no, you don't have to. All right, I'll, I'll come to that. So. I'll do the same thing and find the optimal demand for good X for agent B. Her budget constraint is very similar. Instead of A's, I'm gonna have B's, right? So everything else is the same. Utilities are the same, uh, I mean, same functional form. They face the same prices. So therefore, agent B's consumption on good X must be 
WBXPX plus WBYPY divided by 2PX. All right? Good. So that's utility maximization. Part two. Well, you may wonder, what about their Y consumption? I don't really need that to calculate the Walrasian price ratio. So I skip that part. Uh, the, mar uh, the, the, the market clearing conditions. So what is market clearing conditions? The, for good X, the supply has to be equal to the demand, all right? So that's the whole idea. So what is supply? The supply is WAX plus WBX. What about the demand? Demand is how much good X and good Y, a uh, good X these agents consume, would like to consume, XA plus XB, I mean. All right, so let's use this. So how so? Well, this is WAX plus WBX, the left-hand side. The right-hand side is going to be, um, so this term, WAX, PX plus WAYPY uh, plus, uh, so both of them are divided by 2PX, right? Uh, plus um, WB, WB uh, XPX plus WBYPY divided by 2PX, all right? So here I can make some simplification. So how so? The left-hand side, there's nothing to change. The right-hand side, um, so I can write this as WAX PX divided by 2PX, right? So this is the first term, plus the second term, uh, WAY PY over 2PX, plus the third term, WBX PX divided by 2PX, and then finally the fourth term, WBY PY, divided by 2px. So here the px's will cancel out. Here the px's will cancel out. So py over px, all right? Let's call this, I don't know. Um, uh, let's call this what? Um, I don't want to call it x. Let's call it, let's call it alpha, okay? So what does that mean? This equality means wax plus wbx equal to uh, WAX over 2 plus the third term WBX over 2 plus uh, WAY plus WBY divided by 2 alpha, right? PY over PX, I call it alpha. So what do I have then? So this is WAX, WBX equals to half of this term. So I send this to the other side, it means WAX plus WBX over 2 equals to WAY plus WBY over 2 times alpha. So the 2s, I mean, over 2s will cancel. So you know what? The alpha, which is the price ratio, PY over PX, must be equal to the total endowment on good X divided by total endowment of good y, all right? So once again, the equilibrium, the Walrasian equilibrium price ratio, PY over PX, must be equal to total supply on good X, the, or total endowment on good X, divided by total endowment on good y, all right? Well, there are infinitely many such PY, PX ratios. I mean, let's give a numerical value. For example, WA is one and one, WB is equal to 2 and 2, two alright? So therefore the PY over PX ratio is going to be total number of good X, which is 3, divided by the total number of good Y, which is 3, and so it should be 1. Meaning the price of good Y and price of good X must be the same. Uh, well, how much? I mean, for example, P, the price of good Y could be $5, price of good uh, X could be $5 as well. Or price of good Y could be $10, price of good X could be $10. Doesn't matter, there are infinitely many possible prices. All it matters is that the ratio must be equal to one, given that these are the endowments. If I change the endowments, the price ratio will differ, will change, all right? 
Um, because of this, usually what we do when we analyze a general equilibrium, I mean, when there are more than uh, one good, we pick one of the goods and we call it numeraire. Numeraire. I hope I didn't write it wrong. Numeraire good. We fix its price, uh, price of the numeraire good as one. So for example, here you can assume that the price of good X is one. I mean, it's the numeraire good. Good X is the numeraire good. So therefore, the price of all the other goods, here I have only other good is Y, the good Y. The price of good Y is relative to price of good X. So the price of good Y is therefore has to be equal to one, all right? Um, or I'll tell I mean, which good should I pick as a numerator? Doesn't matter. I mean, uh, if, if you have different applications, uh, people choose different goods as the numerator. But usually, as I said, we pick one good as the numerator and write the price of the other goods as a ratio of um, the, 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 relative, the relative prices. So, I'm sorry. I hope that was clear. Once again, uh, the utility maximization, we solve it. And then the supply equals demand. Oh, here's one thing. Why didn't I talk about YA and YB? You can. You can calculate YA and YB here. How? Well, once you find XA, uh, just plug it here. You're going to find YA by dividing both sides by PY. And symmetrically, P, uh, you can find YB. Once you find them, you know, remember the uh, supply equal demand must hold for both goods. Um, you can then say WAY plus WAOBY has to be equal to YA plus YB, and then solve for PY over PX. If you do that, you're going to get exactly the same equation. You must get exactly the same equation. All right? So it is enough for that reason that we work only on one good and then it's market clearing condition to find the uh, uh, Walrasian price ratio, all right? So you don't have to calculate both uh, uh, demands, X and Y. And the reason for this is, uh, is, is, as I said, if the market clears for one good, the market must clear for all the other goods. So that's a, a general property. Uh, and, and the main reason is because the agents are facing the same prices uh, for all the goods and the utility functions uh, all depend on a positive amount of X and Y, etc., etc. So obviously there are some uh, technical assumptions behind that, but it's fine that you ignore one of the goods. Here I ignored good Y and only calculated optimal demand for good X and I used the market clearing condition for good X. All right, I hope that was clear.